In the city of London, a depressed man, Vince, lives alone in his trashed apartment. He struggles to cope with his recent divorce and has lived a sluggish lifestyle after his unsuccessful marriage. Suddenly, he wakes up from his alarm and receives a call from Neil. Meanwhile, Neil notices Vince hung up and he suddenly gets hit by a shoe. A woman scolds Neil for thinking she's an escort. He doesn't remember her name, so the woman strikes him again and Neil drives away. In the meantime, Graham argues with his boyfriend, who wishes he was invited to the boys' weekend. Graham storms out and blows a kiss, saying no girls are allowed. On the other hand, Mikey argues with his wife, Bex. He says he's going to his grandmother's house for another boys' trip to cheer up Vince. Bex says he can celebrate his divorce with him as she tries to remove her wedding ring. Mikey reveals he glued the ring to her finger and he leaves. In Patrick's case, his wife argues that he would rather go with his friends than meet her parents. As she bickers, Patrick listens to a stress therapy audio and leaves. Vince gloomily looks out of his apartment and places his lighter on the railing. Then he gets his bag and leaves. At a comic store, Matt angrily explains a comic to a kid. The kid tells him to calm down since it's just a comic, but the passionate man says it's art. Matt tells the boy to leave, so the boy teasingly gropes a mannequin. Angered, Matt chases him out. Shortly after, Vince heads back until Graham and Mikey arrive and carry him. Upon leaving, Mikey runs back and grabs Vince's lighter. Afterward, they arrive at a pub and have fun. Later, Mikey returns Vince's lighter. Neil asks where Banksy is, so his friends say he's always late, except for his wedding when his bride didn't show up. The group laughs while Vince sits in silence. Patrick decides to give Banksy a call. Meanwhile, Banksy rushes out of his house and hears his phone ring, realizing he left it inside with his keys. While waiting for Banksy, Mikey notices Patrick brought golf clubs despite no golf courses at their destination, Moodly. Prepared, Patrick shows a bag of golf balls since all he needs is an open area. Neil tells the men that Vince used to be called Fearless. Supportive of his pal, Neil says Vince has protected his friends from a bull at the Pamplona bull run. Then, Vince shows his pierced wallet from the event to Mikey, and a photo of Vince's ex-wife slips out. Mikey apologizes and gives it back to Vince. Putting away his wallet, Vince glances at a restaurant across the street and sees a woman sharpening knives. Abruptly, Neil tells Vince to snap out of it. The men smoke a cigar and the bartender scolds them to stop smoking, so Neil arrogantly calls her a slag. Neil lays out a plan upon their arrival in Moodley to piss on trees and get wasted in a pub. Their pretty driver, Ruth, arrives, leaving the men stunned. Mikey tries to remove his wedding ring as Ruth looks at him. Neil calls her a babe, so she mentions that isn't her name. Neil hands her cash and says she'll be named Candy. Meanwhile, Banksy finally leaves his house. Candy and the men go to the minibus and head to Moodley. In the meantime, Banksy's van breaks down. At the bus, Candy asks Vince if he's divorced, leaving him pissed. She says there are worse things than a divorce, such as murder and castration. Then, Candy asks why they're heading to Moodley, and Vince says Mikey's grandmother lives there. The friends find out that women outnumber men in Moodley. Candy jokes that's the reason why they're headed there, to be greeted by a village of man-hungry women. Suddenly, they stop and find a dead sheep on the road. They leave the bus, and Candy drags the sheep away, so Vince helps her. Mikey says his grandmother is on a cruise. The men realize Mikey hadn't told his grandmother they're staying, but Mikey says he knows where the key is. They hear a phone ring and they all check their phones. Vince picks up his phone and tells his ex-wife that he'll sign the paper soon. Another phone rings so they all check and Mikey picks up a call from Bex. Neil has had enough, so he confiscates everyone's phones and gets back on the minibus. Arriving at Moodley, they realize they're at a dead end, leaving them disappointed. Candy says she'll leave soon so the men wander, finding no one. Pissed, Graham tells Mikey to break into his grandmother's house and secure a bed. He suggests drinking at the pub and asks for a volunteer to invite Candy. Immediately, Matt and Neil volunteer, but Patrick discourages Neil from going. The men head to the pub while Mikey goes to his grandmother's house. Matt goes to Candy until he sees witchcraft products. He takes a closer look, then notices a political poster of a woman named Meg Nutt, sponsored by the laundry detergent Wanda Wash, and sees a torn man's poster. Mikey arrives at his grandmother's house but doesn't find the key on the gnome. Across the house, a dismembered hand remains unseen. Meanwhile, Neil urinates in a restroom. He hears a woman groaning, so he checks the next cubicle and sees her vomiting. On Mikey's grandmother's lawn, Mikey finds the key and spots a bloody handprint. At the pub, Neil says he saw someone puking in the restroom. Graham speculates the locals are sick until Patrick smells a horrible stench, unaware of the corpse. Matt finds a bullet. Neil scares him and the men look at the witchcraft merchandise. Mikey wanders and sees a bride eating a corpse. He thinks she's joking until she grabs an axe, so Mikey fearfully runs away as she chases. Vince notices a woman on the street. 
thinking she's homeless. She turns around, so the men look for spare change until a soldier tackles her down. The soldier brings out a knife, so the men stop him. The knife falls, and the men beat him up as he tries to explain. The woman grabs the knife and stabs Neil's hand. Suddenly, Mikey smashes the gnome on the woman's head. He reveals her face, saying there are more monsters until the infected bride, bartender, and witch arrives. The snipper, an infected hairdresser, comes out, so the men carry the unconscious soldier and run to the bus. They find an infected candy, so the men run to Mikey's grandmother's house. In the backyard, they find a dying soldier. Mikey gets the soldier's gun, and the dying soldier says it's empty and advises them not to go into the woods. Unexpectedly, the bride splits his head with her axe, so the men run. Mikey opens the door and they seek refuge in the house. With the men hidden, the women leave. Neil checks the telephone but finds out it isn't working. Infuriated, Mikey mocks Neil for confiscating their phones in the bag. Patrick speculates a chemical spill infected the women. However, Vince thinks the air is contaminated. Mikey wonders why they haven't gotten infected, so Patrick says only women can get it. Abruptly, Neil hears something outside until a flock of crows scare them. The soldier wakes up and tells them all the men are dead. However, the men find him suspicious. The man doesn't reveal what caused the infection, so the men taunt him. Patrick intervenes and stops his friends. In the kitchen, the soldier introduces himself as Sergeant Gavin, and reveals there's a virus that only women get. He claims most of the man-hungry women are in the woods, so he'll go with them to the bus and leave. Later on, the men execute their plan and hide. Vince tells Neil the plan to lure Candy out, so Neil asks why he's sure she'll follow him, and the men say it's because women love him. Gavin tells Neil to kill Candy if he needs to, but Neil tells him to stop calling her Candy because her name is Ruth. Graham tells him now is not the time to stop objectifying women since they need him to be the misogynist man they love. Neil heads to the bus, and Candy chases him. With Candy gone, the men get inside until more women appear. The frightened men flee as Patrick tries to get the bag of phones from the bride. Patrick fails and evades the bride, so he climbs up a billboard. As he escapes, the bride strikes his leg. Surrounded by cannibals, Mikey recognizes Julie, his old fling, and she attacks him. The bride chops down the billboard while a panicked Patrick finds his golf balls in the bag. As more starving women approach, Vince saves Mikey from Julie. The snipper chases Vince until Patrick hits her with a golf ball. An infected dentist chases Matt, but Patrick accidentally hits him, so he strikes the dentist's teeth. The men back away as the women fight each other. The men bet on who will win until one of the women gets decapitated. Terrified, they run away and separate. Meanwhile, Neil stops running. A woman appears and whips his buttocks repeatedly. He gets the golf balls and throws them at her. After, another woman comes out, and Neil spots a football, so he kicks it at her. He runs inside a house until a woman knocks him out. At a toy store, Vince looks for a weapon until they hear something. The snipper barges in, so Vince pushes the door. Matt spots a fuel shelf, sprays her with it, and lights her on fire. At a clothing boutique, a woman appears, and Gavin shoots her. Mikey furiously asks why he only decided to shoot a woman now, but Gavin says he was saving his last bullet. Curious, Vince asks Matt if they sell petrol in toy stores, but Matt says it's fuel for radio-controlled cars. Mac then mocks Vince for not knowing, and Vince says they need weapons that aren't made in Taiwan. Shortly after, Matt finds a walkie-talkie and gets an idea. He controls the toy car outside and drives it to the clothing boutique. The trio gets in and takes the walkie-talkie attached to the car to communicate. Matt asks Graham if they've seen Neil, but he says he's probably still running. Neil cries as he's held captive in a woman's house. The monstrous woman eats severed fingers while the terrified Neil flirts with her to escape. He pleads for her to untie him, which angers the woman, so she gets her electric knife. Neil fearfully backs away and the woman dismembers his finger. While Patrick listens to his therapy audio, the bride chops the billboard. The men try to formulate a plan over the walkie-talkies, and Matt gets an idea and makes a flamethrower. Mikey suggests using one of the severed heads as a bait attached to the toy car. Therefore, Graham puts the head on the toy car and signals Vince. As a diversion to set the bait, Gavin dances behind the glass wall and distracts the women. Graham sets the toy car outside and drives away, luring the women to follow it. Mikey uses the opportunity to break into the military vehicle. However, it doesn't open, so Mikey throws a brick at it, but the window doesn't break. Vince loses control of the toy car and the head falls off. After repeatedly hitting the window, Mikey accidentally taps the car's sensor, which alarms. This draws the women's attention, so he runs inside a butcher shop. Still tied up, Neil disgustingly watches the woman eat his finger. At the butcher's, Mikey finds an infected butcher. She doesn't notice until Vince calls his walkie-talkie. Later, Matt shows Vince his flamethrower. Excited, Vince asks for one, so Matt gives him a tiny water gun filled with fuel. 
Disappointed, Matt gives him his extra, but slightly bigger. Now prepared, the two men confidently head out, unaware of the flamethrower leaking. The two fight the witch, and Matt burns her. Suddenly, the flamethrower combusts, so he drops it. The fire spreads to the toy store, setting the place in flames. Mikey gets thrown out and runs away. He enters the clothing boutique as the women chase him. Seeing a mob of women arrive, Matt and Vince run away, arriving at a church. At the clothing boutique, the trio hears Vince through the walkie-talkie. They look outside and see the butcher throw the walkie-talkie away. Gavin suggests they head to the church as Graham gets an idea. The men change into women's clothing and set up a mannequin as a decoy. With the women lured, the men strut outside. Mikey picks up the walkie-talkie, telling Vince to open the church. Meanwhile, Vince and Matt find a mortuary. The bride chops down the billboard and Patrick falls. He limps to the bus, takes his golf club, then whacks the bride's head. At the town center, Julie appears and grabs Mikey's clothes bag. Enraged, he scolds her to get over their breakup, so she slaps him. Gavin snaps her neck and Patrick rejoins the group. As the woman taunts Neil, she accidentally frees him. So he grabs the electric knife and stabs her neck. He exits the back door and sees women. So he gets on the roof. Vince and Matt open the door for the group, spotting Neil. They shout for Neil's attention until Neil leans on the roof, and it suddenly collapses. He falls inside a room of infected women, and they hungrily approach him. The girls fight for Neil, so he sneakily escapes and tells the girls he'll call them. Gavin orders the group to get inside the church, but Vince finds him suspicious. Thus, Vince and Matt threaten Gavin with the water gun. Abruptly, Neil rushes inside the church as a mob chases, so the men run inside. They take shelter in the church, and the men talk about how hot the infected women are. Graham interrupts, ashamed they don't even respect women. Gavin finds the control button and Matt powers the computer. Suddenly, Magnot appears on the screen as she scolds the colonel. Matt realizes she's the politician on the poster, and he positions the webcam properly. As she sees them, she ends the call. Gavin reveals phase 2 has occurred, a mutation that makes the infected smarter, faster, and weirder. He shows the group the dolphin. If activated, high-frequency sonic deterrence will emit a painful sound only women can hear. He claims it only works after phase 2, so he presses the button. In silence, the group realizes it's not working, so the men blame Gavin. Matt discovers the virus is in the Wanda Wash detergent. Suddenly, Gavin's spine gets cut by an elderly woman. Vince shoots her with a water gun until Mikey realizes she's his grandmother. Suddenly, Matt repeatedly beats her with the golf club. Traumatized, he goes to the mortuary. Moments later, Vince checks on Matt and sees the witch stab Matt to death. Vince informs his friends that Matt has died. Enraged, Mikey attacks the woman. Finally, Banksy arrives at Moodley. Angered, Mikey grabs the witch's sword and stabs her. Later, the men mourn for Matt and hear something, so they check the basement. At the bottom, they discover the corpses of Moodley's male population, devoured by women. The infected spot them, so they rush back up, go upstairs, and barricade the room. Meanwhile, Banksy takes Vince's lighter. At the roof, Vince and Neil spot Banksy. Vince instructs Banksy to get a ladder, so Banksy leaves. As the men barricade the door, Banksy arrives with a ladder and climbs up. The group explains to Banksy that they're trying to escape from the man-eating women. However, Banksy thinks they're high. While Graham and Vince barricade the door, the men get down the ladder until a woman arrives. The woman shakes the ladder, separating Mikey and Banksy as they land on another roof across. So they use the ladder to bridge the rest towards them. Left behind, Graham crosses the ladder until the woman tips him over. He falls, and the woman jumps on him, so the men escape. As they get down, Banksy drops the lighter, and Neil takes it. The men rush to Banksy's car and find out he used a two-person rental car. The friends argue, and Patrick intervenes, saying they need teamwork. Unexpectedly, the snipper stabs Patrick to death. The butcher arrives, so the men run to the bus. Neil fights Candy until Vince shouts her real name. She pauses, so Vince punches her. Suddenly, Banksy gets stabbed to death by the bartender. The friends get on the bus, while Vince gets into a midlife crisis and asks for his lighter. He exclaims that they don't know anything about women yet are alive, whereas their friends who respect women are dead. Fed up with women's ideals, Vince burns the photo of his ex-wife. He starts the bus, drives, and crashes through the fences until they reach the road. In the basement, Graham wakes up and calls Neil with a walkie-talkie. The men hear him and Vince stops the bus. Graham tells them he's in the basement and asks where they are. Instead of telling the truth, Vince says they're on the way to rescue him. They drive back as Graham gets the dolphin. The bus wears down and the men see a mob of women approaching. They get golf clubs and Vince tells them to bash the women's heads. The trio approaches the women, prepared to battle. Meanwhile, Graham plugs in a wire, activating the dolphin. 
Unexpectedly, the women stop. The trio gets confused and Graham arrives with the button and reveals he got it working. In disbelief, Neil tests it by pressing it, so the women unfreeze. He presses it again for them to stop, realizing he can control them now with the button. Afterward, he throws it to Vince but misses, and the button falls and breaks. Immediately, the women chase them. Their friends push the injured Graham on a cart as they run for their lives and laugh their way out. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.